This view of the Colorado River can take your breath away, but so can this one. The darkest areas of the map show an exceptional drought drying up a water resource for 40 million Americans who live along the Colorado and its tributaries. Before you, you see the Virgin River, Virgin Mountains, and we're in the Virgin Valley. The drought here is getting so bad, even desert camels are parched. Here you can see that the water table has dropped so low that we're un unable to lift it. Guy Seekless owns the camel safari just north of Las Vegas where 36 camels and other critters survive on the once dependable Virgin River. This is a brand new submersible pump. We literally put in a, I think it was about 4,000 feet of uh, irrigation line, which was disappointing <laughs> when it ran out. In the last 20 years, a drought this bad has popped up three times along the Colorado River. And the most dramatic view of the drought is right here at Hoover Dam and Lake Mead. The white band on the shoreline of the lake behind me, that essentially represents the uh, level that the lake has dropped since 2000 when the drought started. The amount of water lost from Lake Mead since 2000 could cover a big chunk of New England, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island under a foot of water. But our models right now are projecting uh, Lake Mead compared to where it is right now, you might see another 20 feet or so of, uh, of that band kind of extended. Dan Bunk oversees the Hoover Dam for the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. He says if the predictions are right, several states will have to reduce their water usage by up to 15 percent in the next few years. You see, the Colorado River is fed by snowfall in the Rockies, and climatologists tell us that's where the problem begins. With the rise in temperatures, there's less snow, and therefore there's less water that actually is flowing into the river due to snow melt. These guys can go a very long time without water. So camels store water in the circulatory system. The hump uh, is basically a suitcase of fat. If there was more water coming into the camel safari, simple farming could feed the herd. Just not this year. This is not the time during the pandemic to to be engaging in unnecessary expenses. With the drought making it impossible to grow food, he's now forced to buy all of this hay. And these guys can eat five to six bales of the stuff per day, making it very expensive. And our hay cost is roughly 30,000 a year. That would be affordable if Las Vegas tourists were still coming to see the camels, but there are no tourists. He sold the shuttle buses that used to bring them here to feed the animals. And down there on Lake Mead, where the white band is now 140 feet deep, the people who live here are already cutting back during these dry days on America's largest reservoir. Garrison, Utah is out there, about halfway between Vegas and Salt Lake City. But behind this rusty door, the whole cave itself is a formation. Feels like I'm stepping back in time. Is a portal to another era. Watch your step right there on that piece of coral. Travis Allred's family, wife's family, discovered this cave. Have been caretakers of this natural wonder since 1956. The entire thing is crystalline. These balls of crystal that magically glow when you hold up a flashlight have been covering these walls for centuries. The light's refracting through the calcite crystal and diffusing throughout that whole system, creating this ball of light. And that is why they call this Crystal Ball Cave. And just like a mystical crystal ball, it's all right to walk past these? Yep. This cave may actually be able to predict the future. I haven't seen a good rainstorm here but once in the last year and a half. 200 miles south of here near Las Vegas, Lake Mead has a dry ring. The drought here dates back some 21 years. What happens in Vegas comes from somewhere else. My name is Matt Lockneed. I'm a paleoclimatologist at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I study past climate change. When you have climate changes in the Arctic, for example, that melting sea ice cause the high pressure cell that's sitting over the Pacific Ocean to strengthen. And that means less rainfall is brought into the Southwest. And it's the caves that record every drop of the past. When rainfall leaks in, and form stalactites. They have rings that grow one on top of the other. But they're not like tree rings you can count one per year. You can look back here and see those different growth cycles. Each cave ring 
takes decades to form. The caves allow us to go back much further in time, 12,000 years and even longer. By uranium dating these cave rings, scientists can study droughts of the past and know more about what's happening with today's drought. This whole area where I'm walking was water. Even the year before last, this was all water. I gotta really duck down through here. This passageway is the lowest part of the cave that's about 150,000 years old. How do they know? Well, there's fossils right back here. These bones are the ankle portion of Eohippus, which was a miniature horse that lived between 14,500 years ago and 150,000 years ago. Thousands of years before the pyramids were built in Egypt, there was a mega drought raging around this Utah mountain with the cave forming inside. The cave rings recorded it all. The stalactite here is normally dripping once every one to two seconds. Where there was once a foot of water deep inside the mountain, there's now nothing but sporadic drops. Dr. Lockneat says what we see happening in the Arctic today could be a butterfly effect that brings back extreme dry conditions of the ancient West. And so what we see are connections between different parts of the Earth's climate system. The moisture that normally is in this cave just isn't here. We should be expecting that there will be less water. The aridity could last for a long period of time. Nature is capable of being even drier than it is today. In rural northern Colorado, Matt and Christy Belton ranch the old-fashioned way. I, I get all my exercise doing this. A horse team never needs a battery jump start. No matter how cold it is, they always start. Everyone does. In the winter, the cattle need fed every day. Christmas, New Year's, doesn't matter. We feed every day. There's no Sundays West Omaha in this business. It may look like there's a lot of snow here in the Colorado Rockies, but all of this is not nearly the amount of snow they need. We're half of the snowpack, so it means half the runoff to keep the rivers full. Those banks right there would be probably three times that high. It would almost be like we're going through a tunnel with the horses. These warmer, less snowy winters in Colorado echo through the canyons of Arizona, impacting more than 40 million people downstream. There are natural cycles, but there's also kind of the humans contributing to the rise in temperatures in a time that wouldn't necessarily be happening otherwise. The snow that does melt sets out on a 1,400 mile winding journey to the Colorado River Delta in Sonora, Mexico. And along the way, the drought has left this massive dry ring around Lake Mead. In the last 20 years, America's largest reservoir has lost some four and a half trillion gallons of water. And the rain doesn't come like it used to in, in June and July and throughout the summer. Matt tells us this snowfall crisis has all kinds of ripple effects like the price of hay going through the roof. So farmers and cities are already cutting back on the water they use. We've been able to sort of hold off I think a real crisis. Current projections are showing for the lake to drop even further uh, during 2022. And if the trend continues, we could be looking at a mega drought in the making. Hopefully it'll come back in four or five years and we'll start getting moisture like we used to. For now, the Beltons are just moving forward. Because I can't feed too much in one spot. There may be no Sundays off west of Omaha, but more sunny days and less snow is already a reality on this mountain ranch. Less than five months ago, the largest wildfire in Colorado state history was burning right through these snow-packed hillsides. The trees and brush were just that dry. Uh, we also have a statewide drought, hotter, drier climate, and unfortunately, 2020 was not an anomaly. It was, in fact, a harbinger of the future. Colorado Governor Jared Polis has since issued a drought emergency in the state, but the real cowboy boots on the ground effort to hold back the dryness is happening here, just 60 miles from that fire line. You know, the lack of water, you know, doesn't help things grow very well. <laughs> Mandy and Matt Gordon ranch this land outside of Steamboat Springs in a new high-tech way. And then you just walk along and 
and put it in there and place the wire just as you go. Now here's how ranching normally works. You buy or lease a large chunk of land, you let your cattle graze and wander everywhere, you feed them, and the herd grows healthy and strong. But the soil often suffers, especially in these dry times. More and more people are finding that by switching to grazing management, they're able to have a little bit more success. Grazing management means the Gordons use this solar charged electric fence to box off small areas of the field. The cattle don't graze everywhere at once. And then we would move them like two days later to a the next one that was like an acre or two. We say, come on boys, and they come through the gate. We don't have to do any pushing or anything because they know what's coming is fresh grass and then their heads are down eating all the grass. <laughs> the idea here is to keep grass growing and water flowing under those hooves. So that allows the photosynthesis process to occur, you know, which sequesters carbon. The boom in microbreweries nationwide is helping ranchers as well. This feed, is actually leftover mash from the beer making process and grazing animals love it. So do the Gordon's customers. It turned out to be really, really good beef. Folks on the other end who, um, you know, don't really eat a whole lot of meat, they would try it and say, this is really good. This kind of sustainable ranching was originally developed in Africa and is now growing in popularity on the dry lands around the Colorado River. It'll help our land be more productive even no matter what the precipitation event is. Still being able to be productive through times of drought. Just as Colorado ranchers are adapting to a changing climate here in the Rockies, some cattle themselves are getting used to new earth under their feet every single day. I'm the reporter from that story you just watched. Since you're still here at the end of the video, you may want to subscribe. I've got more than 800 stories just like that for you to look over. In fact, YouTube is recommending this one to you right now. These are the documentaries I've done around the world. We're also on your smart TV. Look for these logos, the Weather Channel or Pattern.